Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back. Today on Melanie's Math, we're gonna be talking about frequency tables, dot plots, and histograms. We're gonna do this all in the same video because they kind of go together. Now, if you wanna follow along with the worksheet that we'll be using, you can find it in the first link in the description below. Okay, so let's say you have a set of information or a set of data. And in this case, it looks like this is the final grades in a math class. And so student number one got an A, student number two got a D, student number three got a B, and so on. That type of information you can actually display a variety of ways. And we're gonna show three of them and show how the same data can be represented three different ways. The first way that you'll often find is what's called a frequency table. And this literally just tells you how frequently or how often an event occurs. So in other words, if they're asking us to fill out this frequency table that says, of those 25 students, how many were A's? Well, there's nothing really to it other than going through and counting. So like, I see one of them right here, that was student number one. I think student number four, student number nine, student number 13, and that's it. So there was how many of those? One, two, three, four. Four students had an A. So in a frequency table, the first column is gonna be whatever your category is. In this case, we're talking about grades. The second column is always frequency. It's always how many of that thing occur. Okay, so you could do the same thing and go through and count up how many Bs. I've already done that just to kind of move this tutorial along a little bit. But if you go through and count them, there were five students who ended up with a B. Uh, if you count the Cs, there are seven students who got a C. And then there were six students, if you count them up, that got a D. And then that leaves uh, for the Fs, that was three students that got an F. So the point of a frequency table is just to show you how many um, of a certain event occur. So there were four A's, five B's, seven C's, six D's, and three F's, okay? Now, a dot plot is kind of related to a frequency table. In other words, you can use a frequency table to fill out a dot plot. A dot plot can use dots, hence the name, or X's or check marks or smiley faces or whatever you want. Um, but it just is a way to translate it to a visual representation of how many there were. So we just got done saying that there were four students that got an A. On this dot plot, instead of using dots, I'm gonna actually use X's. And I'm gonna go in that little category for A and put four X's. Or you could use dots or check marks or smiley faces or whatever you want. Okay, now, as far as Bs, there were five of them. So I'm gonna put five Xs. And you wanna try to keep these roughly the same size and roughly in line with each other. And the point of this when you get done is to just quickly see like which category had the most or the least, that sort of thing. Okay, uh, the Cs, there were seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The Ds, there were six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then there were three Fs. So one, two, three. Now you've made a dot plot. So you can see how a frequency table and a dot plot are very closely connected. The frequency table obviously is just a, it, the same information in a table format, but then the dot plot shows it to you graphically. Another way to show that graphically is with a histogram. So a histogram is a fancy bar chart or a bar graph. And there's two things that make it unique. Uh, number one, the columns or the bars themselves are the same width. They they're, have the same width. Uh, each bar is the same width. The other thing that makes it unique is that those bars are touching each other. So not only are they equal width, but they are connected to each other one side by side. Let me show you what I mean. Um, let's do draw a histogram and it's just gonna be a bar chart. This first bar for the A's has to go up to four, right? Because there are four students who scored an A. So I'm gonna just go over from the four and then down right in the middle. You notice that each one of those columns is roughly evenly spaced, which is why this is not just a bar graph, but specifically it's a histogram. 
Then the Bs, there were five. So I'm gonna pick up right where that one left off, go up to the five, over, and then down. So we're making a bar graph, and each one of the bars is the same width, and the bars are touching. That's what makes it a histogram. The C has to go all the way up to seven. The D is gonna go start over from six, because there were six Ds, and then three Fs, okay? So we've turned it into a bar graph, but specifically it's a histogram because, once again, the bars are equal width and they're touching each other. So, if you wanted to talk about this class's, the final grades in that math class, you could use a frequency table, you could use a dot plot, or you could use a histogram. And it's just three different ways to display the same type of information. Now, what I would recommend is if you've downloaded this, go ahead and go to the second page and see if you can complete that frequency table, dot plot, and histogram based on what we just talked about. So hopefully this video was helpful. And if it was, consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.